What's up, s'mores? I'm Shannon Morse. Welcome to my YouTube channel all about technology, news, reviews, and tutorials. And today I have a new review for you of my new Corsair Crystal 680X case. If you haven't been watching all of the videos on my channel, I highly suggest that you subscribe. But I recently did a build with NVIDIA's GeForce Garage Crew, so I was able to take home this beautiful new build, which a lot of the components from my 280X build from 2019 ended up in this new 2020 build. So I wanted to share my experience about that in that previous video. And today I wanted to review that new 680X, even though it's slightly older, but I figured you would probably want to know what it's like to build in this new case. So I'm gonna take you over to my computer desk where I have my computer set up and show you everything there is to know about the Corsair Crystal Series 680X. So this case came out about a year ago and the current MSRP is still about $250. However, sometimes you can see it on sale. This is a mid tower size, similar to the 280X, but it's bigger and it's a lot more convenient. So the overall dimensions of this are 16.65 inches by 13.54 by 19.88 inches. And it weighs about 25 pounds empty. That's empty. That's without anything else in it. So pretty big. And it is dual compartment as well. So it hides all of your cables in a second compartment, just like my previous build did. This one comes with tempered glass, steel, and plastic as the materials, hence the weight and the durability. And it also comes in two different colors. I have white here, but there is also a black version. So I'm just gonna walk you through this review by basically walking around the case, and I will show you each of the sides and give you all the features that way. It's much more linear, and I feel like it's a little bit easier to review a case when I'm going from one side to another. So we'll start with the front. As you can see, there are three LL120 RGB 120 millimeter fans installed. Uh, luckily on the front, you can do three 120s or two 140s maximum, but it does come with those RGB 120s pre-installed. So you don't have to install any fans yourself. They are super, super quiet. They are all included and they all plug into the RGB LED controller, which is also included. Now all of that is controlled via Corsair's IQ software so you just install that on your computer. I also use Asus's motherboard so I can use the Asus AI suite to also control the fans but I have to do the colors through IQ so vice versa. There is a tempered glass cover and there's a magnetic dust filter which goes over the fans underneath that glass. Now I noticed that removing the filter and the glass is kind of a pain in the ass you got to remove two thumb screws on the radiator mounting bracket inside of the case and then you got to pop out the front cover from the toolless brackets that are holding it in place. It's kind of tough the first time and it is time consuming to figure out where all those screws are and how to actually get it out without breaking the glass. But once you do it once, you will totally get it from there and memorize where everything is. Basically, you have to open the case to take off the front. Uh, which is kind of annoying. Moving on to the bottom, the main things I wanted to mention are the mesh removable filter, which slides out, which is super easy for washing it or cleaning it. Uh, that's great because I have cats, so keeping cat fur out of my computer is a requirement. There's also four round rubber feet that keep the case from marking up your floor, marking up the desk, and they are high enough to allow for some air intake coming in through the bottom too. Uh, the mounting locations under the case can can be used for additional components, though I'm not using any of those. I just decided to keep it open and I think it looks nice and clean that way. The dual compartment includes a plain cover on the back side, I would say. This is stainless steel. It's in place with a couple of thumb screws and this also has a magnetic dust filter. And then we move on to the back. The back has 10 different expansion slots. So there's eight standard and there's two vertical, but this case does not come with a riser cable or a mounting bracket to vertically mount your GPU. So you should consider that. If you do want to vertically mount your GPU, you do have to buy those as accessories. There is enough space for the PSU in the closed compartment at the bottom. That's what I decided to do here. There's also an exhaust fan. It's a 120 millimeter fan already installed. Now this fan is not RGB LED, although I feel like it totally should because it's very obvious when you have this thing turned on, there's this non-LED fan in the back. That's just my preference though. I'm glad that they 
included a fan so I don't have to buy one myself. Also, I wanted to mention the honeycomb filtering that you see on the back here is really great for airflow, so I'm happy that they included this in this case. Moving on to the top, we have a tempered glass panel. So this sits pretty far from the magnetic dust filter and the opening for the AIO radiator, thanks to there's some spacers underneath there and there's some screws. It's a lot better than the 280X. I mean, this thing brings you so much airflow and it keeps it so cool. It does a great job with getting all of that hot air out through the radiator and I was really happy with it. Uh, you can fit a 120 or 140 millimeter fans up at the top and next to that we do have a series of ports and this is one of the reasons why I wanted this case is because it has type C included on the top. So going from the top to bottom we have reset, there's two USB 3.0 ports, there's a USB 3.1 gen 2 type C and there's also headphone and mic combo and the power button as well. If you're looking at this thing from the the front, let's go to the opposite side. So this has the magnetic latches at the front and hinges on the back that allow you really easy access to all your components on the inside. However, I would recommend turning off your computer before opening it and trying to do anything inside your computer. Uh, this also includes a full tempered glass side with shadowed bezels at the edges, which makes it really, really pretty. Now, if we open this up and go to the inside of the main compartment, it's super, super clean. Thank Thanks to all that room and the cable pass-throughs. There's so much room in this thing. Uh, it's very simple. It has universal placement for all the components, including the motherboard. And the GPU max on this thing is 330 millimeters. There's also the CPU cooler that you should consider. That one can be up to 180 millimeters tall. Now I included an LED rope light in here. I actually think it works really well along the edges, thanks to that shadowed glass bezel hiding the physical rope. So all you get is that ambient light from the physical rope without those LEDs like blinding you if you accidentally look at them. The last place I wanted to look is inside the back compartment. Don't judge me too much on the cables. I think they look fine. They are quite organized as far as that goes. Uh, there are three 3.5 inch hard disk drive spacers and there's a total of four 2.5 inch SSD slots. Uh, you can also remove and customize however many SSD slots you want to keep inside the case, but it's kind of annoying to put them back in. So I ended up just leaving them all in and not dealing with it, <laughs> which is fine because I will probably get a fourth SSD to put in here as well. Now you can put in hard disk drives and SSDs without any issues. It's completely toolless, which I really appreciate. And if you look at the bottom, kind of behind all of my cabling, there's also the Corsair Lighting Node Pro. This has space for three front fans and three more RGB fans. So technically I could replace that non-RGB be fan on the back of the case with something that does include LEDs and plug it into here and still get that IQ technology working with it and syncing with everything else. The radiator and the all-in-ones can also be mounted on all sides thanks to all of that space. So there's plenty of places where you can put all of that. I did want to look at my AI suite temperatures. Uh, they are pretty reasonable though. I think I need to mess with the AIO radiator fans because those are running a little high. I might need to change them in the BIOS or futz with the connectors to the motherboard so that they're recognized in the software. I haven't just done that yet because I'm sometimes lazy, but that's probably all I have to do there. Going back to the case itself, it does get really, really heavy whenever the components are installed, so be prepared for that weight. I think it's slightly louder than my 280X as well with the same components, maybe just because of the radiator fans going really high, um, maybe because it's so much more open. I'm not really sure, but that's something I'm gonna have to mess around with. It's the joy of building a computer. I do love the gorgeous white color. I think it feels really premium. I think the mods look amazing. If you are questioning all the Sailor Moon modifications that we did, definitely watch the previous video on the GeForce Garage channel. I think the lighting looks great as well, especially given the case itself came with so many included RGB LED fans, etc, etc. So I think it looks great. I'm very happy with this build. I think it came out really good, and I'm very happy 
with the case itself. Although it is heavy and it takes up a lot more space on my desk than my previous 280X build, I do think that it was totally worth it because it gives me so much more room to play and it gives me the options to customize the way that I wanted to. So I think that this is a case that I'm probably going to keep for a long term as my sole PC for editing and gaming and everything like that. And then I might do other builds on the side like with that old 280X case and put other things in there like a home theater PC or maybe have that as a secondary editing machine or something like that. I don't know. Let me know what you think below. Anyway, I wanted to share this review with you and I wanted to thank Corsair as well for sending me the 680X for review. I loved it. I thought it was super fun and I'm super happy that they were able to provide that for this build as well. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more build videos or more reviews of computer components, definitely let me know. That's something that I could absolutely do. And make sure to subscribe and comment if you have any questions or concerns. I think that's about it for today's video. My name is Shannon Morse. Thank you so much to my s'mores and I'll see you next time. Bye!